Hi, Ruth. Thanks for the question. All right, so here's when I do a prolonged fast. Usually I do it when I feel like I'm feeling stuck, when I'm at a plateau, or I just need a jump start. Recently, I've been eating pretty terribly. I had family in town, and we ate and ate and ate. And tonight, we had family pictures, and then we had a huge, huge meal, and I came home and had some, some caramel apples and a bunch of junk food. So I'm feeling very, very motivated to start a fast, and so I'm going to do it. I'm going to do an extended fast where I'm going to drink water and unamate only. Now, when you're doing, your second question is how to do it properly. When you're doing an extended fast, you don't want to do anything that's going to wake up your digestive system. If you do it, then it's going to make the fast much, much hungry, much, much harder. You'll feel much, much hungrier, right? So uh, water or unamate or, you know, some people do tea or coffee, unsweetened, no, no creamer, no sweetener. Most people think that they're going to be hungry all day long and that it's just going to get worse and worse and worse. But that's not the case. You can ask anybody who's done prolonged fasting. Ghrelin is known as the hunger hormone and it's lowest in the morning. When we wake up, we do not feel hungry. That's why intermittent fasting through the morning is easier than intermittent fasting any other time of day. We've all trained our bodies to want food around lunch and dinner. It's kind of a circadian rhythm thing. That doesn't mean that you have to eat around lunch and dinner or that you're going to get progressively hungrier. If you look at the chart, you feel a little spike, a little hunger wave, and then it fades. And then another little hunger wave, and then it fades. It's passing. This is also true as you get deeper and deeper into a prolonged fast where you're fasting for multiple days. The hunger actually gets less and less as you go deeper and deeper into the fast. This is because your body is switching fuel sources. Instead of burning food for fuel, you're burning fat for fuel. Now, this is a guy who fasted for 382 days straight, drinking water. He wasn't eating any food, right? Now, he did it under doctor's supervision. Fasting for this long would never be okay if you didn't have a doctor's supervision. But this just goes to prove a point that it's not like you're going to get weaker and weaker and your blood sugar is going to go into the ground, right? If you're taking medication that, drop, that pushes your blood, blood sugars down artificially, then this is an opportunity if you're fasting, prolonged fasting, an opportunity to work with your doctor on reducing or eliminating your medication during the fast. Ruth, your last question was, how often do I do an extended fast? Well, as I'm getting in better and better shape progressively, I don't seem to be doing it as often. That being said, every time I do an extended fast, a prolonged fast, I find myself wanting to do it more and more often. I always finish the fast and tell myself, I'm going to start doing these once a week or every month, right? Right now, I do it probably once every other month, and I want to do it more regularly because you feel fantastic. Your production, your work production is through the roof. It's great for your skin. It's great for your health. It's, it's wonderful. Just a reminder, if you don't have excess body fat, then prolonged fasting is probably not something you need to do. This is for people who are trying to get rid of excess body fat.